Okay, look at me, gente. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Ryder. Welcome to the channel. So, today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my most embarrassing moment from flight attendant training. This is probably going to be like, I'll put this in the top three of the most embarrassing moments of my life. When I tell y'all the story, y'all going to be like, really, Jay Ryder? But no, like, you just had to be there and actually go through it to know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, before I get into this video, don't forget to hit this thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. Flight attendant training is scary, okay? It is intense. I might make a separate video kind of like sharing with you guys kind of like what to expect going through training, but it is no joke, okay? It is probably one of the most intense things I have ever had to go through in terms of a job. Okay, even the hiring process is so like, it's, everything is just like very intense. Like the hiring process, the training, the job itself is intense, like everything. But flight attendant training has been harder than anything I have personally imagined. And that's just due to the amount of stress you're under. You're stressed the entire time from the moment you get there all the way through. Like they don't really let off the gas, it's very hardcore. And because of that, it makes you very nervous and nerves make you do stupid, silly things. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Right, so to start the story, we had a drill. Well, we have drills every single week, but um, this drill in particular was the hardest drill. And basically um, a drill is like a test. So you have your written test, but then you have drills. Drills are hands-on. And the reason why drills are scary is because they're pass or fail. So you're being evaluated on something and something very petty can get you sent home. Like that's a side note about flights in the school. You can get sent home for literally anything, okay? Something simple as letting go of a handle, not looking out of a window long enough, um, not speaking loud enough, like when you're saying your commands, like anything can get you sent home. So um, that's why drills are like, to me, me personally, I feel like drills are like scary than um, the written exams. So that week in particular, we had a drill called an ABA briefing drill. And um, that was like the hardest drill throughout the training because not only was it the longest one, but it also required the most from your memory. You had to recite like so much stuff. And like, <laughs> if you miss like one detail, you automatically fail. Like it sounds petty, but like that's how flights in the training is. Like, bro, like you can't miss any details. And um, you only had like a short amount of time to learn this information. I think like we had like a day and it was like, all right, showtime like you're put on the plane and you just are expected to know how to do this stuff but yes i remember that week in particular a lot of people were crying because people were very very stressed out i myself was very stressed um because it was scary like like it was a lot to remember that was a hard ass drill like i'm not i don't care what nobody says like that was a tough drill i mean looking at it now like it's not that bad but in that moment when you only had like 24 hours to practice it okay not even that because really like you be in class most of the day so you only really get like a few hours at home to practice. And then it's like, all right, we're gonna throw you on a plane and just go. So like, that's why it's so stressful. All right, so basically during the ABA briefing drill without giving too much away, um, pretty much you gotta do an emergency crash landing into water and like the pilot, he'll call you and you gotta do like a million things before the plane crashes. And it's very stressful because like I told you, you have to like remember a lot of stuff. It's so many steps. And if like you miss one detail, like you automatically fail. So, and the reason why this one is hard is because it literally lasts for like 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so it's a very long drill, but you gotta do all these things before the plane lands into the water. And if you're not secured, then you automatically fail. Like it's very, very like black and white, pass or fail. All right, so for the practice round, I was assigned flight attendant three on a crew of four. And um, I had the easiest position, okay, for the practice. Now for the real thing, they gave me the hardest position. I was like, I hate y'all. <laughs> I knew they was going to do that, but um, for the practice round, I had the easiest position. So I was content with that, which is why this makes this story even more annoying. But anyways, during that drill, there was a part, we were probably like midway through the drill and um, we had to do an emergency demo. So, so you know when you're on the airplane, you're about to take off, they do like the safety demo. So the safety demo is like where they hold up the seatbelt and then they put the oxygen mask on and you know, they do all that. But there's this thing called an emergency demo and that's when the plane is about to crash and you're like actually in a, a active emergency. So you're like telling the cabin like what to do before the plane crashes. And that was like one of the things we had to do was an emergency demo, along with a million other things that we had to do before the plane crashed. But anyways, um, so yeah, we in the middle of doing the emergency demo with live life vest, okay? Just remember that, all right? So, um, <laughs> all right, so we doing, we in the middle of the emergency demo and you know, I'm in the aisle, I'm doing my thing, you know, I'm pointing to the exits and you know, I got my safety card and 
You know, like I'm doing, I'm doing the whole thing. So about midways into the emergency demo, I realized that I still have my link in my hand. And basically what a link is, it's a, a company issue iPhone. Every flight attendant has to have it, it's required by FAA. It has like all your manuals, your procedures, like everything you need for a flight attendant. It's like a flight attendant Bible, basically. Um, you have to have it on every single flight. So I still have my link in my hand. I was like, oh crap, like I don't need to be holding on to this. So I was like, let me put this in my pocket. So, um, <laughs> All right, so we have like these training jackets. So I was gonna put my link in my pocket, all right? So I'm looking forward, cause you know, we're still being evaluated. So we have to like, you know, look very professional. And um, so I don't look down. So I'm reaching for my pocket. I'm pulling, thinking I'm pulling the zipper, but my dumb ass pulls the inflation handle to the damn life vest. Now, like I told you, on an emergency demo, they use live life vests because it's an emergency. Because when a plane crashes, you have to inflate your life vest and jump into the water. Okay. <laughs> so, all you hear is. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh shit. <laughs> so, I'm reaching down trying to put my phone. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, so I'm reaching down trying to. Hold on, guy. Ah, oh, hold on, wait. <laughs> hold on, bruh. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do this video. This is right after the announcer, the, um, the lead flight attendant, she's like, do not inflate life vests at this time. So all you see is this tall six foot four dude with this big ass life vest just like ballooned up and I'm sitting in the middle of the aisle and I'm just like, and all you just see is everybody snickering and laughing, bro. Like I saw so many people ducking their heads behind the seats. And then what made it worse is the instructors, they started putting their clipboards in front of their faces. So I know there was this one guy in my class, like he's very like chill, just very cool, calm, collected dude very serious all you can see is the vein in the top of his forehead and you just see him trying not to die of laughter i remember i just wanted to faint like i just really wanted to pass out or like crawl in the bed and disappear like i just i really felt like mortified all you just see is everybody just laughing and giggling and i got like this big life vest on and i'm still being evaluated that's the thing so i still had to like pull it together because like i'm still being graded so but it was just very distracting because you see all these instructors and it was all the instructors. It was instructors that I never even met before. So now in my mind, I'm thinking now they don't take me seriously. They're just laughing at me. I'm like, this is their first impression of me. Like now I'm just like this goofy flight attendant. And one of my instructors, he was laughing so hard. He actually left the room. Like he walked out the room and um, I saw another one of my instructors. She put her hands over her mouth. She was like, and then you just see everybody just laughing in. But then what made it worse was I was trying to deflate it. So on your life vest, there's like a little tube and if you press down on it, it, it can like deflate the vest. So I'm trying to like slowly deflate it and all you hear is And then you just hear more people laughing and giggling. I was like, bro, I look so stupid right now. So, you know, I had to still continue on with my briefings. And as I was trying to brief the passengers, everybody was laughing at me. And they were nobody could take me seriously with this life vest. And like, you know, the planes are already small, so I'm like bumping into stuff. And bro, it was so embarrassing. And then this is like the worst. This is not even the worst part. Then the plane, we about to crash, right? So the captain's on the thing. And he's like, brace, brace, brace. So I'm over here. I can't even put my seatbelt on to my jump seat because the life vest is like in the way. And then you just see another instructor, and she's just laughing. I'm like, bro, like. Everybody is laughing at me, dog. And so I remember after the drill was over, like I finally had got off the plane and I took the life vest off. And um, you can, the instructors, they have like a briefing room and you can just hear all of them laughing. They just cracking up, just cracking up laughing at me. And then you hear all the classmates and the instructors like, so how did they do class? And then somebody's like, oh, they inflated their life vest and then everybody just busted out laughing. Then one of my crew partners, she's just over here wheezing. I'm talking about wheezing, 
Okay, um, she was supposed to be, <laughs> she, she was supposed to be in her brace position. She over here leaning over like laughing because she just could not stop laughing. So then we get into the debriefing room and then the instructor he comes out with the clipboard and he's like, Gerard, Gerard, Gerard. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, like, I know, I, I know, I played in my life as, like, we don't gotta go there. And I had another one of my core instructors walk in and she was like, yeah, let's not try to do that for the real thing. And I was like, no taking, got it. Uh, everybody was laughing and it was funny as hell. Y'all, it was funny. It was hilarious. And I remember like people was coming up to me. They was like, yo, Gerard, like you made the class laugh so hard today because everybody was so stressed. Like every, it was so tense because I told you everybody was like crying that morning. So they said like you low key just like broke the tension because you made everybody laugh. Like, thank you for that. And I just was telling them like, you know, that wasn't my intentions, but you know, uh, but when I tell you like everybody kept laughing, even like on the bus ride back home, everybody kept talking about it. Then the other classes found out about it. People in the night class knew about it. I'm like, how y'all even know about it? But everybody, you know, was just telling everybody around the hotel, like Gerard and played his life is. And then, so you just walking past people in the hallway, everybody like, Ch -ch -ch, and make a sound effects and Phew. And I'm like, bro, like, okay, ha, 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 like. Every and I remember that night, cause there was a bar at the hotel, like on um, one of my classmates, he was like, look, I'm gonna buy this dude a drink today. Cause like he deserves it. So they actually bought me a drink. Um, because they kind of felt bad for me, but everybody was like, you just kept it together. Like, they were like, how did you keep it together? Like, how did you keep going? I'm like, yo, like, the show must go on. Like, you can't stop if you mess up. Like, you just got to keep going. It was even putting memes, like, because we had, like, a group message. So they was putting, like, life vest memes in the group chat. And the group chat is, like, a hundred some people. So, you know, they kept on um, putting, like, the life vest. I'm like, I hate y'all. Y'all are annoying. <laughs> but yes, everybody was talking about it. It was the talk of the town. And I just know like the instructors, they're gonna use me as the example. Yeah, we had this one guy one year, he accidentally inflated his life vest. Yeah, class, don't do that, okay? It was pretty embarrassing. Like, I know they're gonna talk about that. Um, but yeah, it was it was very, very embarrassing. Like, in matter of fact, I was, like, while it was funny, and yes, I was laughing. I was rolling with them, because it was funny. It was also very serious. And so when I did get home to the hotel, like, I actually did, like, I was very pissed off because I'm such a perfectionist. Literally, my instructor, he told me I did everything perfectly. It was just the life base. And unfortunately, had that been the real situation, I could have got sent home. So like, that's why I was beating myself up about it because it was like, that was just such a rookie mistake. And you know, like, I was like, bro, like, you know better. You know, like, that was just so simple. How could you like mess that up like that? But thank God it was the practice. But yeah, like, I was really upset. Like, like I shed a couple of tears. Like, that's how angry I was. I was like, bro, like, you did something super stupid today. Like, you could have got sent home if this was the real thing. I was very hard on myself about that. And just not so much the people like making fun of me. Like, that actually made me laugh. Like, the classmates, I loved it. Like, the sound effects the memes, like people just like laughing about it. It was like the instructors, I didn't want them to not take me seriously, especially the new ones who I've never met before when they just saw me, like that's their first impression of me is like, this dude is a joke pretty much. And so that, that's why I was like really upset because I knew in the future I was gonna have to work with these people again and I didn't want them to feel like, oh, he doesn't deserve to be here because you know, he's silly or, or you know, like he made such like a rookie mistake, even though they know everybody makes mistakes and I'm kind of overthinking it, but I was really upset. I remember I called my mom later that night to tell her what happened. I'm like, Ma, you ain't gonna believe what just happened. And then here she go. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, like this ain't funny. Like I could have got sent home. Like I'm like, you're not supposed to be laughing. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. Like y'all, I'm not gonna lie. It was funny as hell. Like I never seen, I guess cause we've been so stressed for so long, like so many days. That was probably like the most I done seen people laugh the entire time we was in training because training is intense, you know? The instructors are serious. So, you know, to see everybody laugh, like that was kind of like a breath of fresh air and it loosened everybody up. But, and then when we did the real thing, so yeah, when we did the real thing, by the way, they assigned me flight attendant number two, which was the hardest position. And I already knew they was gonna give me flight attendant number two. I just, I already knew. And um, for those who've done ABA briefings, y'all know, Flight attendant to what you have to do is a lot. And so um when but when we got to like the demo part and I had to do the emergency demo, um everybody was like looking at me and it was like, don't mess up. So when they were like, when you inflate your life vest, you'll pull down on the tab. I was just holding it. I was like, see? And then everybody was kind of smiling. 
But yeah, like I actually did perfect. I made it through um, that ABA brief and I passed. So I did it with a perfect score. And the instructor that was doing my evaluation today, he actually was messing with me. Like he tried to pretend like I messed up. And he was like, nah, I'm just playing, man. You did really good. I was like, dude, do not do me like that. Like I got super scared that I was gonna have to make the group redo the whole thing again. But um, yeah, that was one of my most embarrassing moments from flight to the school. But yeah, don't inflict your life vest during an emergency demo. All right, take care, y'all. Peace.